Hello, this is Haley McLaughlin with the League of Women Voters of Portland, and you are watching the Video Voters Guide. We, in conjunction with Metro East Community Media, are here to talk with candidates running in the May 2020 primary election. With me today is Rima Gondor, running for judge of the Circuit Court District 4, Position 12. Welcome, Rima. Hi, hi, Haley. Hello. So, please tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're running for this office. Okay, so I, I've been an attorney for 23 years. I moved to the U.S. when I was 18 years old to go to college. I was um, part of a family migration um, a scenario. I came, I went to college. I grew up, though, in places where, um, in Lebanon, in Iraq, where you had a dictatorship, you also had a chaotic civil war going on, depending on the country at the time I was living in. And the legal system there, whether in Lebanon, which took years and years to get anything done, and even if it got done, there was a huge chance of bribery and people getting justice or injustice that way, or in Iraq where uh, fr even friends of mine, somebody could knock on your door in the middle of the night and you disappear. And then, you know, a month later, you find out that the person has been sentenced, tried, sentenced, and put in jail. Um, so I came from that background where it was always the rich, maybe the powerful, the people with means that were able to get justice. Uh, when I went to college, I was very attracted to democracy in the US, to the legal system, and decided to go to law school. And through time, I've learned that there are differences and the ideal we have for um, proven innocent before, I mean, guilty before proven, I mean, innocent before proven guilty, or, uh, the right to have justice, is it's an ideal. We still are working towards it. It's still not there. And I've been working to try to improve that. In the last few years, um, I personally, I'm a Muslim, I'm an Arab, I'm an immigrant. The amount of fear I felt for me and my family, the amount of, not distrust for me, because I knew judges, I have some power, <laughs> but just the fear that the legal system is not gonna hold up, um, that people that can come in front of it are going to not be given a fair chance. And going out in the community, going out in whether it's the Latino, Latinx community, the Arab community, the Muslim community, just the immigrant community overall, and the community, LGBTQ plus community, everybody had the same fears. They feared that if they had to go and get their rights exercised and that the courts may not be able to protect them because they didn't necessarily trust who was in the courts. And that's when I decided that as a member of the community that is at fear, I do have privileges. I have um, an education. I have, I speak the language. Yes, it's English. You know, it's an, e I'm an ESL, but I speak the language. Well, I have the means, I have the connections. And I'm scared. So it just made sense to put those privileges aside and try to get everybody not to have the, the fear. We can only have justice if everybody believes in it and everybody actually is treated fairly and everybody gets the same chance. And that's why I decided to run. Wonderful. Thank you. What challenges have been and will be created by the pandemic to the effective and efficient administration of justice? And how do you propose to meet those challenges? Yeah, I mean, I think there's gonna be challenges all over. Um, immediately, one of the challenges I saw is we were getting orders from the Supreme Court, uh, our Supreme Court and Multnomah County very quickly, which was great. However, it wasn't being distributed everywhere. It was making it to the attorneys. It wasn't making it to the people we serve. Um, it was only in English. There was no translations. So one of the first things I did was to start to do some PSA videos just saying, and uh, started with English and Arabic, because I do speak Arabic, and then uh, recruited people like my husband and friends to do it in Spanish and Russian. Uh, and Mandarin, because the information was not getting to where it needs to go. It wasn't going to the community. It was there. You had to be able to look for it and be able to find it. 
but not everybody can do that easily. And no, and they're pretty complicated orders, right? So even getting attorneys were debating what the orders are, let alone what other people would look at them and read. So that's one of the first things I saw is that lack of distribution and making it as accessible as possible. What in, in the long run, what's gonna happen because we have in custody um, defendants, they get priority, right? This is the part where you're innocent until proven guilty. You're in jail, you're waiting your trial. You need to go first, right? But what that means, and that's fine and great, but that means is the rest of everybody, the rest of the people, whether it's a family law matter, you're getting divorced, you're working on child custody, whether you're a small business needing to get out of a contract. Right now, we're going to see a lot of bankruptcies. We're going to see a lot of landlord-tenant, whether commercial or residential. These are all issues that you know are going to to be coming up and we need to be able to move. We need to be able to make sure it's the information is accessible and um, maybe gear up and um, have the governor approve maybe a few more judicial positions to be able to handle uh, what we're gonna be getting. Thank you. Uh, what's your philosophy on the purpose of sentencing in criminal, in criminal cases? Yeah, so sentencing, I mean, Judges can differ, but it's usually is either rehab the defendant, deter future um, actions, and punishment, right? So for me, it's it's a combo of all together, and it depends on the situation, whether this person needs more um, sentencing that, that works towards getting them rehabbed, whether it's because of um, drug issues or because of other issues going on in their background. It's because they're, how, you know, houseless. So that's where um, that part of the sentencing should works the best. Um, deterrence, um, you know, if somebody is drug addicted and you punishment, punish them, it's not going to stop them from re-offending, right? And at the end of the day, whether the sentencing, the sentencing is the end of the case, but it's also what allows us to set up, hopefully, services that can help um, rehab people and, deter, you know, deter future inaction versus just punishing them. Because once people serve their sentence, they are member. I mean, they continue to be members of our society and community, but they're going to be out there, and we need to make sure that they're supported in a way that they're not reoffending because of something out of their control, like uh, resources or healthcare or a house to live in. Thank you. Uh, this has been our video voters guide. Thank you for watching. The primary election is Tuesday, May 19th. Be sure to inform yourself about the candidates and ballot measures and exercise your right to vote.